Hello and welcome to Let's Play The Wheel of Time. This game was released in 1999 and is actually a quite faithful adaptation of Robert Jordan's great fantasy novel series with the same name. It also takes place 150 years before the books, so it is basically a prequel to the events described in the novel. Now, having said it's a fantasy setting, why don't you take a guess at the genre of the game? If you said RPG, then you are wrong, 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 wrong. This game is actually a first-person shooter, and this genre blend alone makes it interesting, especially if you like Texan. It was also a huge success critically and way ahead in technical gameplay and story aspects compared to other FPSs at its time. However, it also failed in sales, which is why I think the great majority of you guys have never even heard of it. This can be traced back to two things. First, the lack of decent marketing required for a game without a big name, and secondly, well, let me paint you a picture. Yes, it had to compete with not one big name, but several highly anticipated games, all of them on the list of all-time classic first-person shooters. If you find yourself in such a position as a game designer, you have already lost. I don't believe many of you will be familiar with game settings, and other to the game's designers, so let's watch some expositionary intro, shall we? The wheel of time turns, and ages come and go, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. In one such age, long past, the age of legends, mankind enjoyed a time of prosperity. Certain people, called Aes Sedai, were born with the ability to sense and channel the One Power. This was the energy at the center of the universe, the driving force of creation. Drawing on the One Power, the Aes Sedai could accomplish anything. They controlled the weather, healed the sick, and gained virtual immortality. With mastery came arrogance. One woman used her power to bore a hole into a place existing outside time and creation. This released a dark presence into the world. Although it took the name Shaitan, it became known by many others. Father of lies, soul's bane, or most commonly, the Dark One. Many flocked to the Dark One's banner, including 13 of the most powerful Aes Sedai, known later as the Forsaken. Their army was filled with twisted creatures created by the Dark One out of nightmare. Trollocs and their horrific masters, the Murdral. The War of the Shadow had begun. A man called the Dragon led an assault against Chael Ghul the location of the boar, and he succeeded in forcing the Dark One back through the breach. He closed it off, trapping the Dark One and the Thirteen Forsaken on the other side. The dragon created a collection of palm-sized stone seals to contain the power that kept the prison closed. These seals the dragon entrusted to the remaining Aes Sedai. For years, the Aes Sedai kept the seals safe in the White Tower. But the Dark One had his revenge. Moments before his banishment, in a final blow against the dragon, he tainted the male aspect of the One Power. The taint drove every man who could channel insane. And uncontrolled, these madmen rent the very earth with their power. This time became known as the breaking of the world. The women of the Aes Sedai rallied and eventually destroyed the male channelers. But many of the seals were lost in the chaos. Only two remained within the White Tower. To this day, the Aes Sedai search for the missing seals. But unknown to them, others search as well. What was, what will be, and what is, may yet fall under the shadow. Now, let's play! 
the tutorial. And as you can see here, game designers had the brilliant idea to make an optional tutorial 10 years ago already. Isn't it about time we learned from the past? Elena, in order to be initiated into the White Tower, you must be tested. The artifact you see here is a special Tirangreal for this purpose. Walk through each of its arches in turn. They will bring you face to face with your greatest fears. Don't panic, but listen for my voice. I will guide you through. In this way, we start your training. The first time is for what was. The way back will come but once. Be steadfast. You were a curious child, Elena. A cave-in trapped you inside this dark cavern. You huddled in the blocked entrance for hours, terrified of the dark. Finally, someone from your village dug you out. That's not going to happen now. Because you never actually explored this cave, it is forged from your suspicions. It is what you feared it might be. No, no, no. Too cheap. Too cheap. You must face it and escape. Follow my directions and all will be well. In this part of the cavern, it's safe to move around. Explore a bit. Stay still. But be careful. You may have to jump over some of the exit is in sight, Elena, but out of reach. There must be another way to the arch. Steal yourself and drop down. You're hurt, child. Take some of the roots that grow in this cave. They have healing properties. Rest a moment. The root works better if you're still. The only exit appears Don't to stay be through long. the water. Even I to die can drown. There's another exit to this. The arch is close, but there's a climb first. The path is broken, so you'll have to leap over the holes. Be wary of things. The way back will come but once. Walk through the arch. You've done well, Elena, but you've only begun. The second time is for what is. The way back will come but once. Be steadfast. Elena, your virtually non-existent ability to channel is crippling. Fear of failure has driven you to use Tirangreal as crutches, yet you still hide from the world, doing research in the White Tower. Only the lure of new artifacts could draw you from the safety of the tower. These are the basements of a powerful dark friend who also collects Tirangreal, a collection protected by traps. Try the door, Elena. Although the lock... <sighs> so much for that. You must explore this storeroom for another exit, or find the key to this one. Your experience allows you to identify the functions of new artifacts. When you pick up a Tirangreal, examine it to understand how to use it. To break, some crates hold items. In this case, a light globe Tiran Grayal. You've triggered one of the Dark Friend's traps. It protects the key in this alcove. This portcullis isn't reinforced. You should be able to break through it with air pots. the door again. This time you have a key. This corridor is blocked by a reinforced portcullis, opened only by a lever on the- Now, pull the lever to open the portal. When you use the only charge of the shift artifact, it reappeared. Take it again and use it to pass through the remaining portcullis. This trap is the deadliest one. The stream of fireballs prevents anyone from going further. However, the fire shield artifact here protects against both weaves of fire and fire-based environmental hazards. Take and use it. Then walk down the a passive defense. There are much stronger defensive artifacts, such as the Reflect Tirangreal found here. Take, research, and use it against the trap. You might want to use your light cabling. It's done. You're amassing quite the collection of Tirangreal. Why don't you use your new fireball artifact against this wall?
The arch is there, Elena. Only a few steps away. That's all, folks. See you next time when we explore the depths of the tutorial even further.